I implore you to stop looking at your Facebook wall right now and stop ingesting fucking hate and anger. Bing Bong 70, he said, make sure you enjoy your day today. This Word. is not, uh, and not let this social cancer eat the love that grows within you. Yes. Because the love is the only thing that repairs any of this that, shit. Yes. It, it definitely helps to get rid of the damn fear. So right now I have my, I have my computer queued up. I'm going to move into this. We're going to talk to our friend Jackie, Jackie Dawson. She is a licensed therapist and uh, entrepreneur. And we had to just finagle this. So I sent her questions, and she sent me back a recording. So we out here freestyling today. Everything is off the cuff. You're listening to TK in the AM on Bonfire Radio. Please jump on our chat room, bonfireradio.com, or tweet us at TK in the AM. Aura Light 41 says, I affirm I am, am involved in my evolution as self care is an imperative step to preservation and revolution. Butasha affirms for her mother's birthday cake. Word. I wish Word. I had cake. Please, y'all, take care of yourselves. Yeah. Yes. Taking care of yourself is how you deflect a lot of the bullshit. We're going to talk to our friend Jackie, Jackie Dawson. She is a licensed therapist and uh, entrepreneur, and we had to just finagle this. So I sent her questions, and she sent me back a recording. So we out here freestyling today. Everything is off the cuff. You're listening to TK in the AM on Bonfire Radio. Jackie, the therapist, here to talk about um, how this is affecting our psyches, seeing the repeated violence against us and, and people that look like us. How does that affect us? What can we do? And, and et cetera. Good morning. My name is Jacqueline Dawson. I am a licensed mental health counselor and addictions therapist in South Florida. I have been a therapist for about 14 years, working in the jails and the prisons, working in nonprofits, work for schools, um, private treatment centers, public treatment centers, and also psychiatric hospitals. I'm here to answer a few questions in light of what's happening in the world. We need to talk about what's happening to us and go from there. I do apologize for any background noise you might be hearing. I am at work, so I'm taking a few minutes away from my, my job just to talk about this because it's hard and heavy on our minds. <clears throat> and so we need to talk about this because we are hurting and need to get this out to the world as far as how we can deal with tragedy and trauma on a daily basis. The first question you asked was about PTSD and affecting a whole group of people. And in this case, I, my answer is yes, absolutely. So first I wanna mention what PTSD is. It is post-traumatic stress disorder. And the simplest way for me to describe that is a mental health condition that is triggered by seeing a terrifying event, experiencing a terrifying event of any kind. So we typically think of people at war, uh, we think of flashbacks, we think of nightmares, we think of anxiety, we think of physical reaction to something that's happened at a prior um, time. And so my answer is yes, we are, we are sitting here now on July 8th in 2016 and dealing with systematic issues as we turn on the news, as we see the events that are happening this week and this year and the past few years um, that are affecting our people. Are we traumatized? Absolutely. I've turned on the TV yesterday and this morning and I see my brother, and, and not necessarily related to me obviously, but my brother um, shot dead and bleeding and I'm turning on and seeing, hearing gunshots of police officers getting shot and watching videos of people screaming and crying and it's all traumatic. It's all dangerous for us, um, and we're dealing with that as a people, dealing with how to respond, how to go to work as normal, how to continue to live and, and breathe as if this is not happening to us and people that look like us. Um, and so yes, the answer is absolutely, we can definitely be suffering from PTSD or any kind of anxiety. We are all on edge of our seats right now dealing with all of this and it's traumatic for everything. We talk, turn on social media, you turn on the TV, you turn on the radio and it's there in front of you. You cannot do anything about it, it's in your face unless you decide to completely um, 
step back from everything, we are all being traumatized. Your second question asks about our psyche and what it does to a person's psyche that constantly has to fight to prove their humanity. Um, and the answer is it stops us from moving forward. Mm -hmm. It stops us from breathing, to our preach, being comfortable yo. to walk outside in safety, being able to get in our cars. God forbid there's somebody behind us that we think might be a danger to us. It's becoming a everyday situation now that we can't really function, we can't live. I have a child, a son, and he is still, you know, a, a pretty young, and I just think about what I have to tell him and what I have to teach him to be able to survive out there in the cold world that he doesn't know anything about yet. We've done quite well, you know, he's only six, of, you know, luckily being able to protect him from that life. But one day I'm going to have to sit down with him and talk to him about what the world really is about. Um, because right now all he knows is Ninja Turtles and parties and games and fun in school. You know, he doesn't have to know anything outside of that. So to answer your question, what does it do to us? It stops us from breathing. You know, I can't breathe. It's probably the best way to put it. Um, we get to a point where we don't know how to function and then we're you know go to work or go to school whatever we do with our lives and kind of have to be quiet about it because we don't know who to talk to about it you don't want to be the angry person at work especially if you're in an environment where you're not um the majority right i'll put it that way and so you get to work and nobody mentions it and you keep going and you just keep moving around and looking around and saying i want if anybody knows that i'm about to break I wonder if anybody knows that I'm at my breaking point. I'm at the brink of whatever this is, and I can't function anymore. Um, and it's tough. It's tough. Even as a therapist, I think it's tough for us. Um, but it's tough for all of us. To answer your last question, and to me, the most important, I, I can't stress enough, how important it is for us to practice self-care in the in the wake of what's going on now and the roller coaster of incidents that are happening my suggestions are that we tune out for a little while i am not saying we're going to deny what's happening i'm not saying that we can just completely ignore what's happening in the world but we need to unplug a little bit because we are driving ourselves to a point that we can't even function. So it's okay to turn the news off for a little bit. It's okay to turn off social media for a little bit. It's okay to turn the radio off or turn the radio on and jam to whatever music you enjoy. It's okay to go to the beach. It's okay to go for a run. Whatever's gonna keep you sane at this moment in time, it's okay to step away from all of this. We are completely, constantly being traumatized. We are living in fear right now. And if that means stepping away from all of it just to be able to function, that's what I suggest. Self-care, however that looks for you. So that means you can go get your hair done, go get a massage, you know, if it's not that you can't be that fancy with it. <laughs> That's okay too. Go, you know, find a book to read, jam to some music, go exercise, go work out, go work out. And most of all, I, I want to add this, talk to somebody about it, right? So self-care to me is getting things out talking about our emotions, whether that's a therapist like myself or just friends of yours and family members who can relate, but we have to get this out. We can't hold it in and be bottled up and not process this. We are absolutely at war. We are being traumatized. Traumatized. I can't say that enough. The violence has become our norm to watch it and experience it and see it. We hear gunshots and don't even flinch anymore when I hear it on the news. And we, it, it's, it's just so much to take in. So my, my response to all of this is to make sure that we take care of ourselves. Because if we can't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of anybody else. I'm so happy I got the opportunity to answer a few of your questions. I am at work, so I'm so sorry I can't talk anymore, but please, if there's any way that anything that I can do for you and the people that are listening to this, I am Jackie O'Nappy on all platforms. <laughs> please reach out to me and have a great day. Woo. TK and AM are back.
Wow, that was Jackie. Good stuff. And she said, um, please do follow her on, on all social media. Jackie, J-A-C-K-I-E-O, Nappy, N-A-P-P-Y. She's a woman of color, licensed therapist, 14 years in South Florida. But due to, uh, thank you for social media, we can reach Jackie anywhere in the, in the, in the, in the world. So please do follow her. We appreciate her for taking time. I know she was at work. And um, we're going to go into another call in a few. But Conscious, how did you feel about what she was saying? I think it's, it's important. You know what I mean? As she's saying that, I, I think about how we're already divided. We're disconnected. First of all, personally, we're all disconnected from, from just general self-awareness. And we're disconnected from each other. So it's important that we start gathering and meeting and doing things together to charge our spirits. You know what I mean? There's self-care, yeah. and a part of self-care is being around the energy that, that soothes you, that makes you feel better. Yes. And not being around and have arguments about the fucking fighting the devil. That's time for that. It's time for that. But to rebuild your spirit, to replenish yeah. the nature of your spirit, you need to take care of your health, and you need to take care of your people and be around the people that you need to be. Yes. I'm charged up this morning. I'm on day 11 of a cleanse. Yeah. Then that's and it's how you charge me to up. be able to deal with it because as soon as I turn, I look at my Facebook feed, I, I immediately internalize a lot of shit. We yeah. all do. Oh man! And I recognize that, and I, I refuse to be victim of just looking at something. A good amount of our chat roommates have been uh, experiencing stress uh, yeah. responses, and yeah. myself included. Mm -hmm. uh, the first, after the first. Two things that happened this week Delron Small and Alton Sterling. I had difficulty sleeping. Um, I became listless. I had zero focus. It was a struggle to just do stuff due to the repeated seeing, the repeated families crying. All I saw was in their wives and mothers was my mother. Yeah. And my matriarchs, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The kid, the 15-year-old son, you know, like, I kept on. But I'm like, you know what? I just, I need to see this because this is how I describe it for y'all that don't need to see it, you know? Because yeah. we out here doing, this is our service work. This, yeah. is, this is me and conscious service work. Um, so so there's, a, there's a lot of, of yeah. absorbing a lot of this. And, I mean, you know, the unfortunate thing, and Aisha wrote something really good on her Facebook with regards to it. Um, about being silent, about taking time for yourself, about uh, not feel because people feel a ways because the whole thing about it is like everybody's like, yo, I want to be activist or I want to do something, something has to be done. And mm -hmm. people will make you feel a ways if you are not engaging in the constant dialogue that is really not leading to any kind of change. Right. So if you need to fucking get off the line, I'm the suggesting line. you get off the line. Yeah. Everything that you take in, you consume through your senses affects you Whew. adversely or positively. Yeah. You have control over being able to do that to at least take yourself, go get your workout on, go get a good meal, go eat, go drink your green juice. Whatever it is you, you do to recharge your spirit, your actual physical body and your mentality yeah. so that you can be able to deal with adversity. You can't deal with none of this shit without repairing yeah. your shit and so, caring about the people that need it too. Yes. So don't feel a ways, because people be feeling a ways. I'm like, I got to do something. And it's like, but what have you done? What can you do? Especially if you're sick and, and, and you're not in a thinking yeah. my, mind. We can't. We're still going. We're going to talk to, and I'm going to call her live. So please ex excuse the bat phone sounds, because our, our next call is, is oh, another self-care movement right who, here. Who are we talking to? We call in Laura, Lauren Benson Kelly. Okay. Do -do 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 -do. Hello. Hello. How hey, are hey, you? Hey. I'm well. I'm, I'm staying well. Yes. Just want to let you know for clarity purpose so you don't say we ambushed you. You are on TK in the AM. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I knew that was happening. Yes. Um, you are a woman of color, yogi, self-care practitioner, and just l lover of the people. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes I am. Yes. I'm a singer-songwriter, teaching artist. Yes. I'm the founder of a DC Flow and Creative Wellness. I bring um, yoga and meditation and just teaching artistry tools for thriving to our black and brown children, to artists and MCs, singers looking to tap into their flow. I work in prisons. I work in regular old yoga studios. Yeah. I, I spread the love. You spread the love. 
We appreciate you. So, you know, we were talking to Jackie, the therapist, um, about the, our psyches being constantly exposed to what they're what they've been constantly exposed to violence uh, and violence against people that look just like us on a repeated basis and perpetrated into mm -hmm. the media at, at unsafe and unfounded proportions right because we mm -hmm. know that all mm -hmm. people get killed um, all colors and shades of people get killed by police but I do think there is some type of a concentration of a purposeful concentration of the the people of color, the exposure that we are getting. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is part of a conditioning. So now I want to say that we could fight that by getting our minds and bodies strong. So mm -hmm. I called you and I'm asking you to like share with us things that we could do on our on the go at the office whatever with our people. I'm going to Qigong later. Like what are you what are you what do you suggest? Yeah, yeah. So I have um, a few suggestions. Um, there is definitely, like, yes, find community, go to yoga classes, go to meditation, places of meditation. Um, but there's also that word meditation, I think especially in, in amongst people of color, um, can be a little intimidating. Yeah. So I wanted to speak to just a few, like, simple, easy tactics and techniques you can use throughout your day. Um, and inside of your own mind just to keep yourself calm. So mm -hmm. if I may, trauma, these trauma responses are, um, stress and trauma are a result of our central nervous system getting involved. So it goes back to this idea of fight or flight. Mm -hmm. So all of these perceived threats, as soon as we, even an emotional threat, our central nervous system is ignited and we get ready to either fight or run. So when we are getting ready to fight or run, your body will start to shut down some of the less necessary in the moment um, parts of your body. So this will mess with fertility. It'll shut all of that down. Hmm. This will mess with your stomach. It'll shut that, that down. Yep. It'll um, rush blood to certain parts of your body and take it away from other parts of your body. So when we're dealing with like this constant level of stress and trauma, it's like a slow drip. It's like an IV slow yep. drip of that shutting down. So there's a few things we can do. Um, yeah. The first is overall being aware. Like meditation is mindfulness. There's some weird action happening. Oh, I, I mean, you, we hear you fine. So if okay. you could just talk okay. through that echo. Cool. Um, so meditation is mindfulness. It's being aware. So can you notice throughout your day the thoughts that are creeping into your head? So um, when we start to internalize these systems, we then start to judge ourselves. So let's say you're having a response, you're stressed, you're anxious, or like the other day, I didn't get any work done yesterday at all. When we start to then attack ourselves on top of that, that's not doing any good. So can you notice, oh, I'm not getting any work done, oh, I'm being sensitive, can you just take a minute, take a deep breath, and let yourself have that thought instead of judge that thought. Mm -hmm. Word. So there's one. Um, and then I want to talk about some things that we can do in the moments of acute anxiety. Someone shared on my Facebook, one of my friends yesterday, that he, some cops, like, rushed past him yesterday. Wow. Heading somewhere, something was happening. And that sensation of the cops rushing past him brought him into a near panic attack, right? Wow. So when those really acute moments are happening, there's a few things you can do. So one is... I call it five, four, three, two, one. It's about getting present to your actual surroundings. A lot of this anxiety is coming from what's happening in our minds and not what's happening in real life. Movies. Exactly. Yeah. So dropping into your body and the feeling. So the five, four, three, two, one is starting to take some deep breaths and literally look around and ask yourself these really simple questions. What are five things I can see right now? Woo! So mm. I, I can see a window, I can see my computer screen, yep. I can see my clothes on the floor, I can see the rug. Five, right? Four, what are four things you can hear? Just take a minute to breathe and listen. Mm. Can you hear the air conditioner? Can you hear the fan? Can you hear your own heartbeat? What can you hear, right? Three, what are five things you can feel physically on your body? You can feel your clothes can feel the chair underneath you, you can feel the air brushing against your skin, anything you can feel. Two, what are two things you can smell? 
and one is a little silly. There's one thing you can taste. Mm. Oh. Taste like. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just tuning into the senses in the moment. Yes. Dropping into the present inside of your physical body, getting Thank you. out of your head. So, yeah. thank you so much for saying that, Lauren. Shit. Let me ask you in conscious: um, Can we do that? Can you guide us through that, and we'll answer the questions as you say them? Five, four, three, two, one. Sure. Okay, so yeah. we're ready. Yeah. So, well, to start, sit up straight. Okay. Feet on the ground. <laughs> let your belly be loose. Take deep breaths into your mm -hmm. deep belly. Mm -hmm. uh, we can speak to breath in a minute. Um, and look around. Okay, so. What are five things you can see right now? I see TK. All right, and I see Don D who's videotaping. I see an orange. Two. Uh, I see the couch that we sit on. Four. I see a bar of soap. And a bar, oh, right. yeah. <laughs> take a deep, take a deep, deep breath. Let it go. What are four things you can hear? Uh, I hear you, Lauren. I hear the fan of the computer. I hear mm -hmm. conscious speaking. I had a people downstairs mm -hmm. speaking in the um in the shop. Yes. Great. Take a deep breath in. Let it go. <sighs> what are what are three things you can feel on your skin? Sweat. Because it's hot in here and the lights are on. My my pants. Mm-hmm. My sneakers because it's my sneakers because it's hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Take a deep breath in. This one, you know, it's a little complicated, but what are two things you can smell? Oh, um, my mat. Oh, smell? Yeah. Smell? We actually have stuff in here. Incense. Uh, we have incense. incense. Yeah. Smell the cushion incense. Mm -hmm. um, and just the heat in the room because it's a small place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Take a deep breath in. What's one thing you can taste? What's happening inside your room? Oh, I just drank some of my um, Master Cleanse juice. Yeah. And I have seltzer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, there it is. How do you feel? Calm. I calmer feel than calmer than when I started the show. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it takes yeah. mindfulness to. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Present. Um, yeah. Because we are low on time, I want to move on to the next thing. Yes. Which is breath. The studies show that breath and breathing can literally change the chemical makeup of your brain. So we have the ability to rewire our brains in these moments of anxiety. Yes, we do. Mm hmm. So, um, to speak to how to breathe, I said take that deep belly breath. Yeah. One, one stress response is when you take a breath in, you draw your belly in and fill your chest with air and you feel that tightness in your chest. That's not useful. So when you're taking your deep breath, can you let the belly grow to make space for the diaphragm to move down and make space for the lungs? That is the proper kind of like de-stressing breathing. It can be difficult for people who aren't trained in breath work or aren't singers or speakers um, to get that. So one way that you can figure it out is laying on your back and putting something like a book on your belly. And when you take a breath in, let the book rise. And when you exhale, let the book fall. Wow. Kind of practice breathing that way. And then a really simple technique for that acute moment, again, if you're about to go off on someone at work or you're about to cry on the subway and you need something to do right in the moment, yeah, is, is counting your breath. So I don't know if you can hear. I'm going to start this snap. Is that clear? Yeah, one? bring the snaps closer to your phone. Yeah, here we go. Okay. All right. So let me first say, let me stop the snap. Let me first say that this kind of um, manipulating of your breath can be more triggering to anyone who has breathing problems. So if you have asthma, um, this may not work to calm me down and just recognize that. But if you are comfortable in thinking about your breath and slowing it down, then this can be yeah. really helpful. Okay. So I'm bringing the snap in. We're going to breathe on some count. So exhale all the air out of your body. And we are going to breathe slowly in, two, three, four. We're going to hold, two, three, four. We'll breathe out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then in, two, Three, four, and hold. Two, three, four. Breathe out. Two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in, two, three, four, and hold. Two, three, four, breathe out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'll stop there. Ooh. Yeah. Breathe normally. But the point is that the exhales are longer than the inhales, and you are practicing the art of control. Mm. You're also distracting your own mind from whatever's happening and yeah. focusing on counting and breathing. Yeah. Again, dropping yourself back into your body, back into the moment. So that's a really effective breathing technique. Um, you would do it 10 to 12 times. Mm -hmm. It literally takes like three minutes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, uh, are, and that one, again, yeah. it can show on MRI or whatever brain studies are that that can literally change the makeup of yeah. the brain in the moment fantastic my whole head feels lighter this is from our listener right now so this yeah. is how, this is and you know there is um a little bit of a lightheadedness may come in that's totally normal but just be aware of your own body and its reaction and yeah it feels like too much or too little yeah yeah and then i just wanted to give one more technique specifically for parents and their children yes um, please thank because you our, our babies are being traumatized yeah? Yeah. Whether or not we're allowing them to be exposed to these videos or whether we're actively discussing it with them, they're feeling our trauma and our energy. Yep. And so um, a fun sort of exercise you can do with them, it's kind of arts and crafts and then you have a tool. Once you've created it, you have the tool forever. Yeah. It is a glitter jar. I'm not sure if you've seen these. Mm -mm. So basically you get a mason jar or a jar of any size that you can seal. You fill it with hot water, not boiling, just hot. You fill it with some glue. It really doesn't matter, but you can look it up. Some people have recipes, but some clear glue. Then you get glitter, and this is where it's fun because you can pick out your colors and you combine colors and glitter of different sizes. You get glitter, yes? Oh, yeah. You put them all together in the jar, seal the jar nice and tight, and then the way I explain it to kids that I work with is that the glitter inside of the jar is your ceiling. And so if you are feeling crazy in the moment, you can pick up the jar, shake it really hard so that the glitter is just swirling everywhere, put it down on a surface, and just watch the glitter settle. Ooh. All you're doing is watching the glitter. Yeah. And so if you tell a child this glitter is your feeling, they will actively feel their feelings settle Ooh, down while the glitter dope. settles down. Yeah. And also it just gives you, again, a moment of focusing on something else outside of whatever's happening inside of your head. Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. we love it. We Thank love you. this, Lauren. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, I just, yeah, most Defa Queen from California, she said she's doing the breathing and medita meditative exercises with us on the air. On the air. Yeah. Um, Kay Gaines is listening. He said he best believe I'm doing the decompression technique right now. I'm yeah. stressed out like a motherfucker. You, you, you know, it's <laughs> you know? really interesting and, and it's, it's very important that, um, that you share this information with us because we, we, we need to know what is us and how we can stop certain things. Yeah. And it's unfortunate though when you do speak in these terms uh when things like this are going on and in general people yeah. will will fucking be upset and will make fun of you or will say what you're saying is bullshit but this is science this is how mm -hmm. we work and i said well if you want to know how some people are able to to face the difficulties this is part of it yeah mm -hmm. you know what i mean like de-escalating de de you know what i mean and I, and i just say personally yeah. from a person that spent a good portion of his 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 young adulthood Dealing with police, yeah, being put in positions where I could have lost my life. I'm not a fearful. I'm not a fearful guy's grown man at this point because yeah. I've taken a lot of control over things. That's why I'm able to deal with certain situations. But you have to do it. This is work. This is like any other exercise. This is a, a regular thing that you have to do. This yeah. is not just today because you're listening to the show. This should be a part of your life. This yeah. is self care. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I purposefully made this accessible. So it is work and it is a practice. But yeah. sometimes sitting in silence with your own thoughts, yeah. quote, unquote, meditating, is very overwhelming. And so just getting to counting or breathing or looking at glitter can be a little bit easier way to utilize the tools. It's to smart, actually. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> like glitter. And you know. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're here. <laughs> 
I do have one more. Um, I'm looking at my notes of what I wanted to share. I have one difficult thing you can do as well. Yes, please. Um, if we have time. So this one I do in my bed in the morning. If your bed is against the wall, mm -hmm. you can do it anywhere. The wall meets the floor or there's perpendicular hmm. relationships between wall and surface. So it's really by both putting your legs up the wall. So what you do is, it's a little awkward to get into, there's no cute way, it's fine. You get a pillow or a blanket or a yoga mat, you roll it up so there's a little bit of padding. You place it against the wall. You sit on the floor or the bed, mm -hmm. you put your hip on the pillow or blanket so they're slightly elevated, and then you send your legs up the wall and give the weight of your legs to the wall. Lay yourself, your torso back, let your arms be free, practice some of that deep breath, close the eyes if it's comfortable for you. It's not comfortable for everyone to close their eyes, so don't stress it. Um, and just lay there, your legs up the wall. So this is another physical practice of calming down the central nervous system. Yeah. This reverses the flow of blood. You know, you get that swelling in your feet. Sometimes if you're running around all day, you get the high blood pressure if you're dealing with stress all day. This will calm blood pressure down. This will reverse the flow of energy. This relaxes the legs and body takes some of the weight off what's happening. And there's a million benefits. Yeah. Um, you see yogis standing on their head all the time. That's part of it. That's part of it. That's More. A, um, there's a lot of benefits to that. This is what we call the restorative version of that, where mm -hmm. you're not doing the work of using muscles to hold yourself up, but you're able to get your feet above your heart. Mm. This is great for depression, anxiety, mood in general. These days, these last few days, I haven't even looked at my phone when I woke up. Yeah. Just put the legs up the wall, taking a few breaths first, yeah. and then been ready to start my day. Put the legs up the wall. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lauren. We appreciate you. Right. We appreciate right. you. I'm going to clap you up, yo. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes, thank yo, you. Stop that stress hormone. Stop that cortisol from coming into your body. Y'all have a great day. We appreciate you. And you know what? I want to just give these uh, tips that I got from a conference that I went to last week. I feel like my life is pointing in this key TK. Everything is connected, yo. Take care. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to Naima Johnson of Harriet's Apothecary, which is a, 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 a women-led, a person of color-led uh, space for folks that are looking for more self-care and uh, health, mental health and also just body positivity, um, you know, just to reconnect with folks like that. And she was at the conference and she said, gave a list of 20 things you can do, self-care tips and tr strategies. I'm gonna read like four or five. Listen to yourself, always, often, more and more, again and again. Connect with a trusted loved one. Call them, write them a letter, invite them for a cup of coffee or tea. Cultivate your connection in some way today. Sleep like your life depends on it. Allow yourself even more rest than you think is enough. Remember what is true. Reject false narratives and oppressive messaging. Differentiate between what that which you can do and that which you must do. Can you do it or must you do it? Must is I must eat. Word. Can I go to the laundry today? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. But I must eat and I must sleep, and I must do a bunch of other things. Don't forget, um, take screen fast and intentional social media times out. Write out and say your affirmations. I am worthy, I am loved, I am an inspiration, and more. I have this list. I will take a picture of it and post it on oh, our social media. It. Oh, we can we scan it. Oh, we have technology. We'll scan it, <laughs> and we'll share that with you guys on our Facebook page. On Facebook, we are TK in the AM. I'm going to go to a song, and then we're going to come back with our guest, um, Sum, Sum Patton, yeah. and he's going to tell us uh, his idea for mobilization and what we can do. Because yeah. we use these hashtags, we get these names trending, we get these videos trending, but we could do even more than that, y'all. Yeah. So, listen. Next time I say something about <sighs> meditation, man, take me serious. Take them seriously. We're listening to, uh, well, we're going to play a little bit of Denisha and Scene. It's called Olive. Bonfire Radio. No we, music. We are in overtime, and we love to be in overtime with you. Thank you. All right, so we're back in the mix. And uh, we're going to be talking to our next guest. Let me get him. 
gathered on these these one here phones. One day he'll come to New York and he'll be on the show. Yes, one of these days. Some, are you listening? Are you there? Present. Yes, welcome to the show, Some. Yo, what's good? Thank you for having me. Yo, oh, man, you know, you're always welcome here, and we know you're one of the most proactive people in our lives, and you yeah. came up right away. This is during the Alton Sterling part of the news cycle uh, with solutions, and because I was very dismayed, and I know you saw my post, um, and I just felt like social media, like I, I couldn't continue talking to people. Like having these conversations on the threads and everybody's like, oh, Jesus, I can't. My heart hurts. I just said, look, y'all, I can't talk with y'all no more. Social media ain't helping nobody, but you think it can. So could you, you want to outline some of that for us? What are your thoughts? And what are your thoughts right now? How do you feel? I want to let you have that time to decompress before we go in. Uh, I've never felt like I feel right now. Uh, you know, it's something that I, I saw somebody in y'all chat room say like this, you know something about what's happened in the last couple of days has particularly rocked us and um and i'm feeling that way you know uh i don't know if it's a culmination you know and it, it, just the way that everything has kind of progressed and, and come to a head at this point and now you know we're dealing with the fallen officers in dallas uh, i don't know what it is you know but and, and you know maybe it's probably some of the political climate and, and some of what's going on globally as well but, you know, it just feels particularly potent right now. So yeah. I'm processing how I feel. Uh, last night I had a conversation with my mom. Uh, she called me, you know, about not being local time out here in L.A. because she's in North Carolina. She never calls me that late, so I knew something was up. She was just calling because she's just, you know, she's uh, befuddled by, by what's going on right now. She's scared. She knows I'd be out, you know, uh, you know, whether it's walking or, or riding or hanging out or whatever, and she was just, she fearful for my life and uh, just wanted to check on me. And I never felt that kind of fear before. before yeah. Now. Uh, and it's not, it's, it's, I don't like to own fear. It's a, that's the best word I can come up with right now, but it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's a different emotional set that I'm used to dealing with right now. So, yeah. so I'm processing it. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Um, as far as, um, you know, what I, what I'm talking about, if, if I can give a little bit of context, like y'all. Yes. You know, y'all know me, and y'all know me for a while, and you know my social media presence and um, and what I'm about. Um, to get a listener some background, like I said years ago, that I was gonna post very little um, when these things happen, uh, because when y'all do see me start to post about it, it's gonna be because I have ideas. Yeah. It's gonna be because I have solutions, and until then, I felt useless. Uh, so my, my, my participation in the online dialogue about what's been going on the last few years has been very minimal. And uh, after the Alton Sterling incident in Louisiana, I had a conversation with a sister out of New York who I actually have never met, but I believe we are our mutual friends. Her name is uh, Siobhan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, Siobhan Myers, want to shout her out. Yes. Um, yeah, Shay. Yeah, yeah, we were having a, a, an exchange on Twitter and uh, kind of getting into the nitty gritty of what, a, of what a boycott might look like today. Yeah. And uh, then, then my brain just kind of started, just took the ball and ran with it. And I started thinking about just how all the dots are connected right now. And I work, you know, I work in, in different modes, I wear different hats. I work in marketing um, in the music industry, and I have worked, I should say, in uh, marketing in the music industry, um, kind of behind the scenes stuff, as well as being like, you know, a, an entertainer and a writer and an artist and a creator myself. So I have a lot of different ways of looking at and viewing this, this whole thing. And in this day and age, we've all kind of been encouraged to be creators yeah all these platforms all these platforms are designed mm -hmm. to encourage you to create to create content and build mm -hmm. uh you know build a personality and build content around that personality and and create on someone else's like on their ticket like yeah, not so our they can own make money yeah exactly exactly and so that's how they you know that's the bread and butter instagram snapchat facebook periscope uh, Pinterest, you know, whatever it is, 
you name it, they, they are under the guise that they are free, but you are paying them an intellectual property that they are then selling to create and generate revenue, right? They sell to their advertisers. You know, this is, you know, these are the people that we have. This is how they're interacting. This is how you can capitalize on people's interaction. True story. So whenever this kind of stuff happens, um, there's spikes in usage. Whenever, uh, you know, there's an incident of police brutality, violence, um, and this kind of mode, there's spikes in usage. Yeah. People start Googling. People start Googling. People start Facebooking like crazy. The memes go up on Instagram. You know, the Twitter conversation, especially black Twitter in these particular situations, goes haywire. And it is, it is frightening to me when I really think about it, how much they benefit off of our fear and our outrage. So in my, in my mind, it's time for them to make a stand um, on our behalf and start representing our interests or we start pulling our intellectual property down. In the yeah. Of all of our assets, our presence, our, our pictures, our posts, all that shit should come down until these people and these platforms start to make a stance on our behalf. And if they're already making somewhat of a stance, like Google is making a little lukewarm stance, they've, <laughs> they've, uh, they've, they've, you know, they, they made a stand with, you know, a solidarity with Black Lives Matter in their statement yesterday and, you know, also reminded everyone that they have donated $7 million in grants um, to, you know, initiatives that combat injustice and police brutality when we know seven million dollars is pocket change yeah google made seven seven million dollars just now while i was just talking to y'all giving this background they made seven million dollars you know what i'm saying they have more to give true story but it's no it's noble that they, it's noble that they offered it but now they can take that a step further offer more and also pressure their advertisers because their advertisers that's where money is coming from we need money and we need resources to actually and that changed in a very quick, impactful way. And, you know, where that money goes is kind of where my expertise uh, starts to fizzle out a little bit. And I'm going to educate myself a little bit further on that. But, I mean, it could be in training, it could be screening, it could be screening um, you know, these officers and psych evaluations. It could be in um, yeah. audio, audio, visual tech, um, technology in general, um, anything that can help, you know, prevent, educate, um, and, and assuage these kind of these kind of situations and um, and eliminate them ultimately. So first, we pull down our intellectual property because we are the we feed the cycle. We feed the and then on news cycles, like you said, there's a spike in usage, which makes them more money because people yeah. from different countries. I mean, basically, the, the news we black them out. From fucking Twitter now. Yeah, they have Twitter segments on the news. On the news, the news is using our our our, our intellectual property. Our content. Our content. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. At, and so, and so we need to we need to as a, a people and as a as a community online need to start leveraging our power a bit more. Yeah. And understanding our and understanding our value because we've been fed the narrative that we need these platforms now to stay connected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, we also, and we also need these platforms in order to mobilize and to uh, to organize and, and communicate. And that is, it's becoming, a, it's becoming a weakness, it's becoming a dependency, it's becoming an addiction. And uh, if it's going to be like that, we need to get more out of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's, it's, more than, it's more than just us being able to connect. We need to also be able to say, hey, uh, you know, if we're going to be supplying you with the lifeblood, you know. We then you, we need something back. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then you have, um, we need uh, we need people. We need people. We need Jesse Williams. We need like a crew of what Jesse Williams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, to kind of uh, to structure the idea a little bit, the first thing we need is, you know, we need an alternative platform, right? The, the kind of a kind of a panic room um, that we can go to in these times of blackout because everybody's everybody's on this on the platforms. They're connected to fam you know, family and friends. For a lot of people, it's the only way that they can connect with people that they care about. We need an alternative platform that we can go to and yeah. to that's uh, that's impervious to advertisers and uh, and agendas and, and politics. All right, that's the first thing that we need. Then the second thing we do is, you know, we pull all of our assets down and we black all of the traditional uh, platforms out. Secondly, we need a committee of, you know, of individuals 
who can speak on our behalf and who have wide-reaching influence. Yep. Um, and so to, to get started, yes, it would be nice to have us, uh, you know, some people with some, some kind of notoriety kind of get behind this and help spread the word so that we can build this thing out a bit quicker. So, you know, that's why I shout out Jesse Williams because, you know, he's hot right now. And he made, you know, he made his statement at the BET Awards. So, you know, I'm like, yo, you know. Like this, this is, yeah, he could be, a, we need more guys. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think that, um, I'm not sure if I feel like I, I didn't find anything. I don't know, but I feel like I can offer. You said we need an alternative social network because we need a place to gather. And yeah. like you said, some people only connect on Facebook, but we don't need to be only using Facebook. If we could exactly. gather and do this, um, uh, the, the, the network LO, E L L O dot C O, they actually started in 2014 uh, with a very similar uh, mission. And I think they're pivoting towards more artists and creative people, but their whole thing is ad-free social networks because they found that Facebook and a lot of these networks were running these ads and using your face for content, and they are uh, totally against that. And I'm just putting it out there as an option. If we decide to divest, maybe that's where we all meet up on LO. I have an account there. I don't use it, but I have one, so I'm ready. Let me know. Mimi. <laughs> just, and get back know. to what they. We need ideas like that. We, yeah. we, we, if there are uh, platforms that already exist that can uh, sustain that kind of uh, the influx. That kind of, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Then I'm, I'm totally with it. Yeah. The fucking new internet. Get back to what it was supposed to be. Because before it was infiltrated by these fucking businesses. Right. Yes. The original internet. She Vegas before in the original internet. the original exactly. internet. The so no, no, I mean like before yeah. it was like yo because this shit was a joke to a lot of these same ass companies. Yep. Oh wait, no, we can wait. Oh, yeah. money. There's money. Yeah. There's data. Uh, she Vegas in the chat room said, "Ask a 13 year old how she hides she or he hides stuff from their parents, and that's the network to get on." Word. Wow. Uh, that's the one really? yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw Lauren said I'm on LO but I can't find any black people well we all need to go there Lauren so <laughs> 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 the chat room is speaking up so look guys if y'all want to make a group in there right now we could do that I'm, I'm on there I'm going to log in I got to find my password but we could start this this could be a slow trickle to a boil we could start this did I make an account yeah. there and um, you know anybody with ideas can um, can email Digital Action Committee at gmail.com. Yes. I'm trying to aggregate all the ideas um, and, you know, and structure this out and build this out a little bit. So I'm having conversations with, you know, lovely folks like yourselves and um, other close friends of Copy Dot to uh, poke holes in this idea too, you know, before I go, before yeah. I go a little wider with it so I can, uh, so I can iron this out. Because it didn't, you know, it didn't even dawn on me that people might need like support, you know, once they get off these sites. Um, because they're so dependent on them. Yeah. You, know, I just, you just said pull them down, but yeah, we need yeah. something. We need something. It needs to be a transitional, yeah. you know, space. How do we do that? How do we, you know, go to the new site type shit? You know what? My my first um thing that I'll do in um like as an action step and to honor you some is I will log into my LO account and pl plaster all over my the rest of my social media and be active on it and hope that other people start be, being active and conversing with me. And like, as you continue to build this, as we can trickle people, some people away from, from the constant usage of Facebook. I mean, we could, we could try that. I don't know. I'm, I mean, but that's my action step for today to honor you, bro. In the digital a action committee. I'm gonna take my art shit there. Yeah. AG trap house. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. where can folks, um, you know, find you and talk more about this. Where can they poke holes in this? Where can they uh, bolster your ideas? Where can they honor this idea? Um, so all my social handles are at some killer. Yeah. That's <laughs> K-I-L-L-A. So whatever is your, your poison of choice, just hit me uh, with that handle. All right. Word. Yo, I want to... Uh, you can email me. Mm -hmm. Again, you can email me at Digital Action Committee at gmail.com okay um, okay and on facebook it's some patent that's my personal page you can definitely bring me up there and right. let me ask you a question do you feel like as a person you know this is like a 
this is a big overtaking. Do you feel strong? Do you feel ready? Do you feel, how do you feel? I'm overwhelmed because uh, I think I stepped into some shit. You did. You know, I was angry and, <laughs> and frustrated, and finally the idea hit me like a thunderstorm in the desert. And so I posted about it, and I see, you know, people are ready and they're thirsty for this. Yeah. And um, I'm like, damn, you know, <laughs> I, I, I now I have to, you know, I now have to, I have to step up, you know, and shit, shit will get off the pot. And I have enough going on right now uh, where. I'm like, man, you know, I really need to make sure this is something that I can, you know, that is sustainable and that I can, like, you know, I can grow and I can scale out without getting overwhelmed, getting in over my head and, and, and making promises that I can't keep. So I'm being very careful right now, but also being aware that time is of the essence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and there's not a whole lot of time to, to think, you know. No. So I have to balance between being aggressively uh, proactive while also being... Um, you know, cautious, and, uh, and and um, I don't know what the word. Just, just, just taking the right steps at the right time yeah. with the right people. So my main thing is trying to get people on board who can do things. Yeah. You know, and and so I don't have to. I don't want this to be about me. I don't want this to be a, like my project. I, I I want it to be something that you know takes on a life of its own where I can kind of help guide it creatively uh, and eventually, hopefully, it'll just kind of live on its own yeah. without me having much, in, much involvement. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I, and honestly, honestly, it shouldn't have to, it shouldn't have to be around that long. I don't, I don't want it to be around long enough for the government to infiltrate it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to get in, you know, a, accomplish a few quick objectives on a large scale and then get out and, and we can form something new and something else before they change it. Yeah. So as far as how I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. Um, I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling grateful. I'm feeling um, appreciative of the, the, the love and the support um, that I'm getting for the idea. Um, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. you know? yeah. yeah. I did, the, the one thing I did want to say to you, and I, I wanted to thank you, because uh, I appreciate the fact that you don't just fucking run your mouth, that you think about one way. It's no. definitely not. Peace to Nick's P, who joined the chat room late. Peace to uh, everybody else. We appreciate you, Aris the Chef, Callie Katniss, Godessa. Share this episode. We're replaying later. Share this episode. Thank you, everybody, for listening live. TK in the AM. Giving you three reasons to wake up Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Eastern, only on Bonfire Radio.